Okay, we are live. So hi everyone, and thank you for joining another Foreman community demo. I'm Nafar, I'm an active developer within the Foreman project, and I'll be hosting the Foreman uh, demo today. As usual, we have some updates to share with you and some new things we've been working on to demo. Uh, so for any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us at the Foreman group chat on Metrics, or during the demo, you can also use the chat here on Google Meet. Okay, let's have a quick look at the agenda for today's demo. Uh, our topic list includes five topics. We have feedback requests, we have UI changes, future features to share, and one last developer-focused demo. So I'll share a quick update from the community, and after we can move on to the demos. Uh, okay, so the community update is that we've been busy with the new release of Foreman 3.12, which now is out. The first candidate uh, is available for testing. Uh, as usual, there is a community post with installation and update upgrade uh, instructions. So after you try it out, we would be happy to hear any feedback from you on this release. Um, and to be honest, just today I saw the second release candidate is also out, but sorry, I didn't have time to find uh, the post in the community. So we'll update you if we'll have some news. Okay, I guess we can move on to the first demo today, uh, presented by Leosh about IPv6 in provisioning. All right, let's, let's share the, I'll try to share the tip and that should be working nice all right so hello uh, i'm leo and what i'm going to talk about today is the ipv6 effort in our team where we are right now working on the implementation so uh right now we are in the phase where we are trying to find the best solution for ipv6 support uh in my team, we are responsible for the provisioning, registration, and the host management in general. So this is the main focus area, the main scope that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, so uh, some introduction. Uh, current status is, as I said, that we are working on it. Uh, we don't even have any single pull request right now, but we are building the MVP, which is minimum viable product, where we are trying to find the necessary stuff that needs to be done for the IPv6 provision. The target release is for 3.14, so two, two versions ahead, which should be approximately around five months, but that's just, you know, uh, my guess. Why am I saying that? Is that uh, we are tied by the timeline, we are tied by the releases, so that's why we are trying to keep the scope in the form of the minimum definition, because with the IPv6 is there's the problem that there's so many options and so many uh, tools that customers can use or users uh you can have so many different uh, network setups where uh but basically the configurations are uh, endless so our main goal is the mvp for 3.14 uh we are going to focus on stable federal versions sent to a stream obviously and all the supported versions for the rails which is 7 8 9 and it's going to be 10 in december november something like that uh about the network structure uh we obviously will still going to support the ipv4 there's uh no there's not going to be any changes uh for the dual stack current definition because <laughs> from the discussions with other you know managers developers uh the definition dual stack could be you know a little bit different by the users by the customers so right now we are looking at the dual stack where all the devices on the network have IPv4 and IPv6, including satellite, smart proxy, uh, foreman, smart proxy, and so on. Uh, and of course, we will support the IPv6 uh, only networks. About the scope, uh, just want to say that 
this is the current scope that we are planning we are discussing you know uh it might change but i hope that we are good right now uh so definitely we'll focus on the bare metal provisioning uh, uh on the provisioning with the vmware uh the host management aka okay, registration remote execution ansible that should be uh supported from the first phase and also we would like to uh, provide a new Pro smart proxy provider for Kia DHCP, which is a replacement for the ISC DHCP, which is uh, outdated, not developed anymore, and not maintained. So, with that one for the Kia, we want to focus on externally hosted, not managed by foreman, which is something that we've been talking about for quite a long time because there are many users who looked into that solution. Uh, for example, users who use Foreman but do not have access to the ATP, so this could be very useful for them. And the Kia provider will be uh, working with the IPv4 and the IPv6. Uh, right now, we are thinking about only the stateful mode, but that might change if you will find some different solution. Uh, yeah, uh, that's basically, that's what we got. Uh, just want to remind that it's really in the work in progress. So uh, we are still in defining phase and you are more than welcome to join us. Uh, I created a community RFC for the IPv6. So the discussion is going there. Uh, we also have tracker in the red mine where we are creating the subtask, you know, to uh, manage the scope of the work. And of course we are on the matrix. so. Uh, if you have any ideas, topics, uh, or, you know, knowledge to share, more than welcome. Thank you. That's all for me. Okay. Thank you, Leo. Yeah, I didn't see any questions. Um, but feel free to ask us after. Um, okay. I guess we can move on to the next demo. I will resume that sh screen sharing. Um, yeah, so Leo isn't leaving, but I'll be here to answer any questions uh, so about IPv6, so feel free to ask. Uh, okay, so as I said, the next demo is for me. Actually, it's not a demo, it's more a um, request for feedback um, about the implementation of Secure Boot in Libvirt. Um, I have a community, sorry, it's this one, I have a community post um, regarding this with some more details. Uh, I can share with you a short UI, well, it's not a demonstration, it's a screenshot. Uh, basically, we are working on adding a firmware option uh, to Libvirt, also for VMware, but uh, this feedback request is focusing on Libvirt. But of course, if you have um, feedback about uh, any topic related to secure boot vmware libert bare uh, metal feel free to reach out to me and uh, i'll be very happy to hear and share with you some thoughts and so adding the firmware with the uefi secure boot option to libert is currently in progress there is a pr um right now on form and core um but i can also already tell you that it's going to be different than the current state. Uh, so if you have some um, some experience with Libvirt and Secure Boot together, I'll be very happy to hear your thoughts about that. Um, that is all for me. Let me go back to the uh, slides to share. Um, yeah, so thank you. And the next topic is from Maria. Um, about improvements to the compute resource form. Yeah, I'm gonna take over the screen. Yes, um, yeah. Okay, so the issue, we had an issue in the host groups that uh, people were having a parent host group, it was bare metal and it couldn't inherit it because, because an empty um empty, empty value was just inherited and they couldn't override it basically so now we have an inherit button uh when you change the host group it will automatically take the host group deploy on you can change it by clicking on the inherit and changing it to like different 
uh, thing. And if you click inherit again, it will go back to the parent's value. Um, since it was working similarly as in the host form, I also just did a bonus update to the host. So now if you choose a host group and you change the value, if you click inherit again, it will go back to the value and it will show you all the correct tabs for the deploy on value. So like for libvirt, we have virtual machine here now. And it's a small improvement. I hope it works as expected and is helpful. And that's it for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. And no questions so far. Uh, so let's move on to the next demo. And I can see Manisha is here. So whenever you're ready. Yeah. Um, can you see my screen? Um, yeah, we can. Okay. So, hi everyone. Today I am going to talk about Proxmox new UI, which is available with Formant for Proxmox uh, 0.16. But before presenting you the new UI, I would like to talk about why we needed it. So, there were a lot of minor and major issues with the old UI. So this is the old one, where it was a long form sort of a UI. Um, and the, uh, for example, in CPU section, the CPU flags were there, but not everyone uses it. And not everyone knows what these values mean. Um, other than that, there were issues, like if I add a new interface, the interface value was the same. And if I submit it, it will just show one interface because the ID is same. So it is just overwritten. And the buttons were, yeah, not stable. Same goes with the hard disk. If I add a new hard disk, it would create a, a new hard disk with the same ID because it's uh, made of controller plus device. And not everyone knows that. So people think that, yeah, I have added two word IO based hard disk, but at the end, it, they would have just one because the device number has not changed. And the buttons were also not looking good. So we made some changes. And now this is the new UI. So uh, Proxmox has two types. So one is KVM, one is Alexi containers. Um, so they both look like this. Um, so I have added the fields according to the Proxmox server. So the general fields are added all together here. And for the advanced options, you have nice view here. For the hardware, we have CPU. And since not everyone uses CPU flex, so it doesn't make sense to show this to everyone. But if you want to use them, you have a nice description of what every flag means. And you can set the values here. Um, yeah. And for the network interface, now if you add the interface, it also shows nicely which interface we are talking about. Because in the old one, you didn't know which one is the new one. And it automatically updates the identifier as well. And same goes with the storage. Uh, so if I add a new hard disk, uh, you don't have to change anything in the device because um technically you shouldn't be care caring about the device number because it's part of the id uh you just want to know uh, which controller you are using so if i add a new id uh, controller with ids then the device will be changed to zero and it also shows for example if you have reached the limit of for the controller for example the id controller has can have only three hard disks and if I add more than that, then it will throw error or warning that you have reached maximum number of devices. And another thing is um, IDE2 is reserved for CD-ROMs. Um, so even if you add it as a hard disk, it would be added as a CD-ROM later on. So I have, uh, we have also skipped IDE device number two for the IDE. Um, 
yeah, that's in the eight. And same goes for the Alexi controllers. Like you can add more store, uh, storage nicely with the names shown properly, which one is which. Yeah, that's number eight. Any question? Um, no questions. Thanks a lot, Manisha. It looks very good. Um, yeah, we can move on to the next um, demo. It's a develop, developer focused uh, topic again from Maria. So, Maria, we're getting back to you. Yeah, I am um, working on the updating everything to Butterfly 5. I will share my screen in a second as well. Um, I went over all of Foreman plus the Foreman org plugins plus Catello to update um, to update it to Pythonfly 5. And I lost my mirror. Here it is. And yeah, so I went over all of the repos to make updates. The updates are fairly simple if you want to do it yourself for your plugin. Um, I have instructions in the tracker. Here it is in the tracker. So it's not a lot of work should be. And most of it is done automatically as described here. And also, if you want to ask questions, I'm always available to help. Um, the issue is with plugins is some plugins I know are using form and GS version, whatever, which means the second we update form and JS, they might break, which is why I created all the PRs now. So you can have a chance to go over them as uh, plugin maintainers, see that they're fine. And when we push it to form and JS and form and core, we can push it in plugins and everyone will be happy. Um, most all of the PRs already except the Cotello ones, which has some tests failing, and I'm pretty sure it's because of the tests, but it might be because of the Pattern 55 update. Um, there is an RFC if you want to make comments or questions or complaints. Um, and there is also a link to the tracker for uh, Foreman Redmine if you want to read what's going on there and process of how I did things. I don't think there should be too many issues with it. Um, and pattern, but we need to move to Pattonfly 5 and Pattonfly 6 is on the way. So that is going to be more work later, but it should be less work. And I think that's all of my update for this. All right. Thank you, Maria. Thank you for taking care of it and for letting us know. Yeah, Maximilian, go ahead. Um, thanks for sharing. Do you have an update on the timeline? Uh, when should plugin maintainers yeah, provide a PR to ensure that they're compatible with Foreman JS? Um, I would recommend in the next month to have a PR ready, but in most of the plugins, it wasn't a lot of work because there's a script that does most of the work for you. I think most of my works was fixing JavaScript tests on this. OK, cool. Thanks for sharing. Any other questions? OK, I guess not. Uh, so this is all for today. Our next demo is scheduled for October, th October 3rd. And if there are no questions, I would like to thank everyone for joining. And of course, for our, all the great job you were doing for the, the last release. And yeah, so thanks, everyone. See you all next time.